Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the junkyard crawl at a private vehicle stash in New England. Uh, brought to you, of course, by High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts. Now, 1958 was a big year for Chevrolet. Uh, it was the first year for quad headlights and a whole new frame, the X frame, underneath these things. The perimeter frame of 1957 was replaced again by an X frame, which allowed for a lower overall silhouette. And here's the thing the X frame actually had a longer wheelbase, 117 and a half inches, which was longer than the 115 inch wheelbase of. Of 1957. Another detail too was coil springs at the back, no more leaf springs, but behind these four headlights, which used to be up here, you can see here the V, which tells us this one was born with a V8. But here's another thing about 58, the first year for the 348 big block, the W block as they sometimes call it. Do we have it here? Let's get the drum roll and okay, well that's, that's okay, this is the small block, probably uh, well, in fact, it's going to be the 283. Is it a two barrel? Oh yeah, two barrel carburetor right there. There's also a four barrel possibility. And believe it or not, the 283 could also be had with Rochester's mechanical fuel injection right through 59. But again, not here. This is the basic Workman two barrel 283. Now something kind of cool about the small block Chevy is how the valve train is arranged. Now we can see right here it's a pushrod engine, you know, like all American post-war V8s, but the rocker arms are actually stamped out of a single piece of metal in about five different operations. Uh, there's a coining process, etc., etc., and these little balls and studs make one very simple part do a whole lot. On other engines, these would either be a forged or a cast metal part, but Chevrolet took out a patent, actually, on these stamped rocker arms with the ball and socket pivot. And Pontiac also utilized this. The rest of the GM engines did not have this type of design until later on into the 1960s. But the lightweight valve train on the small block was part of its recipe that made it so popular with hot rodders. These things are light. They rev up good and high. And here it is right here. And it's fifth year of production, 1955, 6, 7, 8, fourth year. But anyway, so this is not the 348. It could be. But uh, not here. Again, we see on this one, manual steering, manual drum brakes, and there's that weird cast iron uh, master cylinder right here with the screw on top. Use a wrench for that puppy. And um, the dipstick right here. Now we do see some linkage. This is probably a three-speed manual. Oh, no, it's not. It's a power glide. If we go to the passenger side, that dipstick down there. Okay, power glide time. And if you know how to add up the clues, you can learn a lot about a car without even looking inside. But again, here it is, the X-Frame on display for the first time, 1958. Now over here, we know this one is a Bel Air, because it has these chrome inserts in the front fender. Lesser Delrays and Biscaynes would have uh, indentations, but no chrome or no, no implants. So again, this is gonna be a uh, Bel Air of which 592,000 Bel Airs were made in 1958. And that's a big fat number. And you gotta love the wraparound windshield, which is state of the art in 1958. This one again is a four door sedan. There's a fixed B pillar right here behind the doors. And um, by contrast, this is car life right here, January of 1958, with a report on the all new Chevrolet. So let's take a peek and see what they had to say about it. Now here's the thing, this is a Chevy Impala. Notice that beautiful roof right there, that hard top with the fast back, big wraparound rear window. Impala was at the top of the pile above Delray, Biscayne, Bel Air, and Impala. Impala at this point was strictly two door, hard top or convertible. And uh, it says here, the top of the line is the Impala series, first seen in 58, by the way, consisting of a convertible and two-door hardtop. Although they have the identical chassis and mechanical specifications as the other three series, Impalas are actually different from the cowl panel on back to the rear deck. These two models are one and a half inches lower than the other 58 Chevys, have lower seating positions, different trim, rear deck, and fender treatment. Impalas have three separate tail lamps tucked beneath the right and left fender fins, while the others have but two. Next page tells us the most important thing. There's the top right. That is the 348 W engine. If we look kind of close, top of the pistons, the combustion chamber is actually in the block. The head itself is flat, and it's called a Heron-style combustion chamber, sort of like international trucks, a lot of diesels. And that, again, is Chevrolet's first big block right there. We lead the way to the 409, uh, which the Beach Boys sang about. Now here, again, we see the uh, non-Impala rear window, a taller greenhouse than Impala, about an inch and a half taller. And inside, well, there we have the standard bench seat interior. No buckets in this period of time. 
Uh, up on the dashboard, we see the automatic shifter for the power glide. There's the uh, arm, the big steering wheel, and uh, the instruments have been gutted out of this one here. But again, this was one of 592,000 Bel Airs made, and we're not even including the uh, Delrays, Biscaynes, or Impalas. So Chevrolet made just about a million cars in 1958. Again, about a little over half were Bel Airs like this. Now here's the thing on this one, the clues, this thing was apparently last registered November of 1982 in the Green Mountains of Vermont. Here's the old license plate right here. And if this plate could talk, who knows what it would tell us about. 1982, U2 was just coming on the scene. Um, punk rock was kind of fizzling and becoming post-punk. Electronic music, the hair metal thing was just starting to happen. Uh, but a lot that's going on here is rust. <laughs> and of course, Neil Young saying rust never sleeps. Well, yeah, he's right. Here it is. Quarter panels, those things are gone. And again, bell air on the rear quarter panel. But again, this sort of miniaturized outboard tail fin, 1957, of course, was a taller structure. Chevrolet went horizontal. And here are those two tail lights which identify this as one of the lesser models. I'm getting it. Impala would have a, a larger area here and three taillights per side. In the back, okay, here is some stuff here. This is the air cleaner from that 283 two barrel. And we know it's the original air cleaner. It's a small hole for that Rochester carburetor. And importantly, inside of this thing, it's a single snorkel. It's silenced, but underneath that is an oil bath hiding in plain sight. Again, you put oil inside of this down here and all the particulates are trapped and the wire mesh or this sort of horsehair stuff right here also helps to keep sand and junk from going into the engine. Notice the bell mouth right here. That's kind of interesting. If you ever saw a Hillborn fuel injection deal on a, a race hammy or something like that, the bell mouth helps to straighten the incoming air charge to prevent turbulence. And uh, you know, these are pretty scienced out air cleaners compared to a later 60s paper element air filter, which is basically a can with a replacement filter element. This is pretty high-tech stuff, kind of. It's also pretty restrictive. So if you want to run your Chevy small block up to six or 7,000 RPM, you don't want to be using this. Inside the trunk, you see hints of the original, I guess, Aztec gold paint right there. And I always marvel at how the most preserved area of any car is the inside of the deck lid up top. Even the original paper jacking instructions right here are still visible. And uh, of all the rust and all the abuse this thing's seen, this is the most cherished and protected part. Because again, it doesn't really see any contact with anything except air. Around this side, we see the, uh, again, the four door sedan body style with a fixed B pillar right there. And bits of the green carpeting inside. Again, lesser models like the Delray or the Biscayne would have had rubber floor mats. But again, we see carpeting inside this Bel Air. So uh, here it is, man, the beginning of Chevrolet's um, coil spring era. Now this car is kind of low to the ground and it's basically still sitting on its springs, but this has coil springs in the back for the first time, 1958. No more leaf springs as we saw in 1957 all the way back, but coil springs, a four link. And uh, again, this allowed Chevrolet to claim a boulevard ride, a little softer, not great for handling, but with that said, these things weren't meant to go around the track at Laguna Seca. These are for Main Street USA. And again, the coil springs really improved the ride. So that's the story of this 1958 Chevy Bel Air, the beginning of the big block era, the beginning of the X-frame, which would go through 64, and the beginning of coil springs on Chevrolets, which are kind of still happening all the way into the 1980s. Uh, so if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel, ring the bell so you're aware of new videos which come out every single day, and we'll see you tomorrow with more Junkyard Crawl.